Hello, I'm Mr. We for Me, and uh, yeah, today we're going to be doing a shorter video on proof texting. <laughs> yeah, uh, proof texting, a lot of fun, isn't it? Um, so, uh, what is it? So, proof texting is basically where you take a passage and be like, oh, this is proof for my view. So, you, you know, proof text is, uh, you know, kind of logical uh, usage of the words there. Um, yeah, anyways. Uh, proof texting is, you know, it's not all bad. You can certainly use it to support your views. And we use uh, certain passages in scripture to support our views on Jesus, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever should believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Uh, yeah, you know, that that is in scripture and we should absolutely use that to support our biblical understanding of who Christ and God are. Um, on the other hand, there are times where we should not uh, do this, and this is especially true when it comes to passages that purport to say something, but doesn't actually. And uh, this is kind of brought up uh, uh, to me after I got into an argument with this guy. Um, he was like, who um, was saying how God would not send babies to hell. Anyways, I'll uh, get into that. So uh, that is what we're talking about. Now, the problem with proof texting is that when we look at a passage of scripture, uh, if we're not careful, what we often do is we're like, oh, I'm trying to find scripture that matches my view, right? And we're trying to be like, okay, so I believe that abortion is okay or is not okay. And so I'm just going to look in scripture and it says, oh, uh, and the babies were all killed. Well, okay, that means, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, like... Uh, from, uh, this is going to be a little graphic. Psalm 138, I think, where it's like, and we dash, uh, the, may they dash the heads of the babies on the rocks. Okay, yeah, the support's bad, and that supports abortion. No, no, it's not. Um, right? And you don't want to be, be like that guy who uh, kind of grabs text and is like, boom, this, this supports my view. Uh, yeah, please don't. Please, please, please don't. Especially with, with that passage. That was just a joking thing. But don't take that out of context. <laughs> okay, I don't want to. I don't want to see this like appear in some meme somewhere. It's like Psalm one thirty eight supports abortion. This is why. And like, okay, no, no. But like, well, main point is you don't want to take this passage of scripture and be like, this supports my view, because. Uh, it might not, and I think more often than times than not, it doesn't actually support your view. Case in point, uh, the guy I was arguing with, um, he was arguing that God would not send babies and children to hell. And um, yeah, I was like, okay, uh, cool. So what's your basis for it? And he's like, okay, well, scripturally speaking, oh, this is good, um, the Bible says that Children are innocent, and therefore they will not be sent to hell. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, can I see your passages? And this is kind of where things went a little sour. Uh, where he's like, okay, well, um, one of the passages is um, Psalm 106, 38. Right, let me just flip that there. Uh, Psalm 106, 38. And it says this, uh, they pour out innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters, whom they sacrificed the idols of Canaan, and the land is polluted with blood. And okay, yeah, innocence and sons and daughters, so maybe we got something going here. Unfortunately, I don't think that's what's being said with this passage. Uh, you see, yeah, it talks about innocence and it talks about children, but it does not say all children, nor does it actually refer to in other words, a universal thing. Uh, rather, what we are seeing here is a rather is a uh, specific example where Israel is being taken as the uh, addressees. They're like, oh yeah, we're Israel, and this is what we did. We murdered our children. We sacrificed them on the altars for to the gods of Canaan. Uh, I would argue, therefore, then that it is wrong to take this as a just in general. Children are innocent of sins because. I think what is being said here is these children had nothing to do with the sins of their uh, their father, of their fathers and their mothers. Their parents, they were the ones who were led astray. But the children, they're just like, 
dude, what's going on? Why, 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 why are you doing this? Like, they had nothing to do with it, therefore they were innocent. Um, see this kind of again in the next text that the dude gave me. Oh, the second. Uh, Psalm 1, uh, Deuteronomy 139. Um, oh, oh no. Uh, Deuteronomy 139, sorry. <laughs> uh, where it says, um, it says this. And as for your little ones who you said would become a prey, uh, and your children who today have no knowledge of good and evil, uh, they shall go in there, uh, referring to the promised land, and to them uh, I will give it, and they shall possess it. And so you're like, oh, yeah, again, innocence of children, therefore children are innocent. No, again, this appears to be referring to uh, Israel's children who are innocent of the actions of their parents. God is not going to punish them. He said he would just punish the current generation after they had rejected his offer of the promised land. They had been like, whoa, those people are big. We're not going in there. And that's basically what happened. Um, this is not, then I would argue, a good passage to say, oh, all children are innocent. All children are blameless. They will go to hell. Uh, they will go to heaven. So yeah. Now I'm not. I don't intend to go into the argument about like you know, do, do children go to heaven or hell? Um, I don't know. No one really knows. Um, that's up to God. I think. Uh, when it comes to, as far as Scripture talks about it, we don't have anything solid. So yeah. But my main point here is we really ought to be careful not to do proof texting, where we take a passage of Scripture, uh, where we see that it contains something that we support. And we're like, ah, there we go. It supports my view, and it's a biblical view, and boom, all done. Well, no, uh, I don't think you can say that here. Um, you know, uh, did, did children, uh, are children innocent? Perhaps. I, I genuinely hope so, but that's not the thing. Yeah, um, so yeah, don't proof text. So how do we avoid doing this, right? Uh, well, number one, we have to understand that um, context, right? Uh, if you notice, uh, I had to read the extra context in the passage. I, I just didn't read it out for you, but you can read it for yourself, uh, the context of the passage. right? But you have to know the context of what is being said, right? Because if it says something, you might want to make sure that, you know, oh, it's not like, uh, you know, um, completely undone by the next verse, right? Or by the verses preceding. Um, let me give you an example that I don't think is in the Bible, uh, but might I could like is like kind of like uh, indicative of stuff. Uh, let's say that um, the psalmist is quoting um, a uh, a guy, right? And he's like, "Murder is good." And you look at the passage, and it just says, "Murder is good." Uh, it's, it's in the Bible. Uh, does that mean that murder is good? No, by no means does that mean does it mean that murder is good. Rather, just indicates that um, somebody was saying someone who's very wicked was saying murder is good. All right? We really, really should be careful not to do something like that. That's an extreme example. Obviously, I don't think it's a typical one, one that you would come across. But yeah, you know that's why you don't want to proof text. So always need context, right? Because next line probably is like, this is what the wicked man believes. This is what the holy man believes, the, the righteous. Sorry. Um, yeah. So, yeah, always keep in context, uh, mind the context. Next, you also want to keep in mind the um, historical context. Now, this one's a little harder to, to keep in mind because, you know, um, not all of us are theologians, not all of us are biblical scholars, but you know, if you got time, uh, yeah, look into, the, oh, whoa, this is, oh, I'm going in there after. <laughs> um, yeah, no, you want to look at the uh, historical context and be like, oh, is there something historical here that's going on, right? Is there a reason why it says this? Because this sounds pretty heretical, but obviously it's not because it's in the Bible, so what do we do with it, right? We want to be asking these questions. 
Um, and third, ultimately, remember that your views are not necessarily in the Bible. Whenever we come up with an opinion, whenever we come up with an idea, and we're like, okay, so uh, it says that we should do, I, I believe that we should support Trump because um, I support him, right? Is it in the Bible? And you're like, oh, it's biblical. And you're like, okay, where? Well, it says the Trump, right? In, in, in you know, some of the Bible translations, like the Trump, you know, the Lord, and it's like the trumpet. And people are like, oh, yeah, that supports Trump's presidency. No, it doesn't. Your view on that is not necessarily in the Bible. And this is the same for a lot of you. Just because you think it sounds good does not mean that it's in the Bible. It might be, it might not. And the thing is, is that if you find that a uh, your view is not in the Bible. The answer is not to twist the Bible so that it matches your view, but that you instead twist your views to match the Bible, or change your views, rather, to match the Bible. You always have to assume that you are wrong when it comes to the Bible. Because you are wrong, unless, you know, you're following scripture. Don't put your own meaning into the text. You don't have to. Uh, you absolutely should not do it, right? So don't, please don't. Just, just don't. If you feel tempted to do it, say to yourself, "I'm proof texting." No proof texting. Proof texting is bad. All right, makes sense. Everyone understand what I'm saying here. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments. If you have any comments, feel free to ask me. Put them in the comments. If you're here to bash me, I do ask you do not do that. I for some, I just see this because of like the uh, video on Mormonism that I made, the Latter Day Saints one. Where it's like two guys show up and they're just like logical fallacies nonstop, and I'm like, guys, can can you like at least try to be you know logical here? Uh, anyways, yeah. So if you do plan to respond, please do so in a proper manner. One that is logical and um, good. All right. So I hope you guys have a blessed day, and I will see you in the next one, which we probably will be talking about hell.